So um, the next section is 40.4, and this section talks a lot about um, the energy that animals need for their like, daily lives. Um, so the overall flow and transformation of energy in animals is called bioenergetic ener energetics, mm -hmm. <laughs> and determines nutritional needs, and it relates to the animal's size, activity, and the animal's environment. So organisms can be classified by how they obtain chemical energy. So autotrophs harness light energy to build up um, organic molecules, and then they use those molecules for fuel. So an example of this would be plants, because they harness light energy, and then they turn that into molecules that they can use in their um, systems. And then heterotrophs obtain their chemical energy from food, which contains organic molecules synthesized by other organisms. So an example of a heterotroph is animals. So then animals use the chemical energy harvested from the food they eat to fuel metabolism and activity. So food is di digested by enzymatic hydrolysis and new nutrients are absorbed by body cells. Most nutrient molecules are used then to generate ATP and then the APT can then power cellular work, enable the cells, organs, and organ systems to function correctly. And finally, the ATP is also used in biosynthesis which is needed for body growth and repair, synthesis of storage materials such as fat, and production of gametes. So we kind of talked about ATP, ATP production and um, when we talked about metabolism. So it's just kind of going over the energy and that ATP is important for any of the activities that the organism's body might go through or just the internal systems. So metabolic rate is the amount of energy an animal uses in a unit of time. Another way of saying this is it is the sum of all the energy require, requiring biochemical reactions over a given time interval. So metabolic rate is usually measured by monitoring an animal's rate of heat loss. Nearly all chemical energy used in cellular respiration appears eventually as heat. So a Kelly meter, um, which is a closed insulated chamber equipped with a device that records the animal's heat loss is used to measure um, how much um, metabolic rate is going on. Metabolic rate can also be used, can also be measured by determining the amount of oxygen consumed or carbon dioxide produced by an animal's cellular respiration. So to calculate metabolic rates over long, longer periods of time, researchers record the rate of food consumption, the energy content of the food, and the chemical energy lost in waste products. So animals must maintain a minimum metabolic rate for basic functions such as cell maintenance, breathing, and heartbeat. So basically, if the animal is doing nothing else, there is some amount of energy that is still being used just to make sure that basic body functions are happening. And this minimum is measured differently in endotherms and ectotherms, which um, we'll talk about a little bit. Um, endotherms, firstly, are like warm-bodied animals, and ectotherms are like cold-blooded animals. So obviously their rates of, um, like their metabolic rates are gonna be different because um, the body processes they have, like homeostasis, it's different for each one. Um, the minimum rate of a non-growing endotherm that is at rest, has an empty stomach, and is not experienced stress is called the basal metabolic rate, or BMR. So the BMR is measured at a comfortable temperature where no generation or shedding of heat above the minimum is required. The minimum metabolic rate for an ectotherm is determined at a specific temperature because changes in the environment temp environmental temperature alter the body temperatures and therefore metabolic rate. So it's important to know whether the organism you're looking at is an endotherm or an ectotherm because the metabolic rates will change because if you think about it, if it's an ectotherm and it's in a colder environment, then it's not gonna have the heat to keep some of the body processes going. So it's gonna have a lower um, metabolic rate. So it's important to know if it's a warm-bodied animal or a cold-blooded animal. Um, the rate of a fasting, non-stressed ectotherm at rest at a particular temperature is called its standard metabolic rate, so SM SMR. And comparisons reveal that endothermy and ectothermy have different energy loss costs. So an adult human male has a BMR of um, 1,600 to 1,800 kcal per day. An American alligator, by contrast, has an SMR 
is only 60 kcal per day at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is about 1 20th the energy used by a comparably sized human adult. Um, therefore, the ectotherms require less energy when they're at just a normal, standard, comfortable state. Metabolic rates are affected by many factors besi um, besides whether an animal is an endotherm or an ectotherm. So these factors are age, sex, size, activity, temperature, and nutrition. And two of the most important factors are size and activity. So larger animals have more body mass and therefore require more chemical energy. And the relationship between overall metabolic rate and body mass is constant across a wide range of sizes and forms. Which that kind of means that metabolic rate remains roughly proportional to body mass um, to the three-quarter power. So it's kind of a graph, kind of showing you um, the relationship of the BMR to body size and how it kind of stays constant for um, based on how big the animal is. So as your animal gets bigger, um, the BMR and energy cost gets, like you require more energy. The relationship of metabolic rate to size profoundly affects energy consumption by body cells and tissues. So the energy it takes to maintain each gram of body mass is inversely related to the body size. So each, um, each gram of a mouse requires 20 times as many calories as a gram of an elephant, even though the whole elephant uses far more calories than the whole mouse. That's important. So the smaller animal's higher metabolic rate per gram demands a higher rate of oxygen delivery. And to meet this requir requirement, the smaller animal must have a higher breathing rate blood volume relative to its size, and heart rate. <coughs> so per gram, it appears like the smaller animals use more energy, but really they're burning it faster and the overall amount for a larger animal is greater than the overall energy for a smaller right, I animal. I think the very important thing here, which you had mentioned, is that per gram, the smaller the animal, the more energy they're gonna consume. Wait, so then does the bigger animal, like do their cells, so their cells take in less energy per gram compared to like the, do you see what I'm saying? Like, like, it makes sense. Yeah. like the mouse they, like, bigger than the elephant, so it doesn't have the same amount of cells, so therefore it would have less energy. Yeah, they have, but, like overall, they require more energy, but like per gram, like you have to kind of break it down, like per gram, they don't require as much, like a mouse is gonna need ratio. more energy ratio. per yeah, day. The portion is Type. different, not the yes. overall if you take a small dog like a Chihuahua versus a Great Dane, the small dog's going to have a much faster heart rate. Not hugely amount, but it's going to have a faster heart rate and, and uh, basal metabolic rate as compared to a Great Dane. So like, I mean, I don't know if you know, but like, so that's why like smaller animals, like they have like faster heartbeats. Right, right. So like you can kind of tell, like compared to ours, it's like because we're larger, we're going to have a bit slower and then even ours compared to an elephant, an elephant's going to have a lot slower heartbeat than we are. Isn't that just because like the, the cells can travel through the body faster? I don't, I'm not really sure. That's a good question. I don't, I, I can't answer that at the moment. But, you know, animals like shrews and hummingbirds have some of the fastest heart rates on the planet. Yeah, but like you need stuff to travel through their bodies really fast to develop how, like, how quick, like, you know what I'm saying? It would, it, 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 it sure it has something to do with the, the uh, fact that diffusion is much easier in them, you know, being smaller body mass, but I'm not sure exactly. But it is true that the smaller they are per gram, the more energy their cells consume. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just kind of go over that again. Um, as body size decreases, each gram of tissue increases in energy cost. And as body size increases, each cost per gram of tissue decreases. But an even larger fraction of body tissue is required for exchange support and locomotive. So that's kind of what Jeffrey talked about. It's a ratio and you have to kind of break it down to kind of understand that concept. So activity greatly affects metabolic rate in both ectotherms and endotherms. So the maximum metabolic rates occur during peak activity. Um, the maximum metabolic rate of an animal can, uh, rate an animal can sustain is inversely proportional to the duration of the activity, which is kind of common sense. It just means that it's easier to keep a maximum rate for a shorter time than it is to keep that maximum rate for a longer period of time. 
which I, if you like work out, you know it's harder to sprint for a long period of time than it is to do it for a short period of time. Period of time. Um, so torpor is a physiological state in which activity is low and metabolism decreases. So this enables animals to save energy while avoiding difficult or dangerous situations. Uh, so bats go into torpor during the day and feed at night. Um, and all endotherms that exhibit daily torpor are relatively